Hello YouTube. Today I want to show you guys how we can walk into items and pick them up and have them actually saved in an inventory system. This is going to be able to support item stacking. So here you see it says blue gem total stack is now four. But I will say up front, you'll notice I'm not showing any display of the inventory. And that's because there's just so many different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you that in the next video. But regardless of how you want to display it, this is a good way of at least storing the data. I just posted an entire video on how I handle my pickup and collection system, but to rehash really quick, I have an interface called iCollectible that has a public void collect method. I have this gem class that inherits from iCollectible, and it currently just has an event called onGemCollected, a collect method we are forced to implement where we destroy the game object and fire the event. And then on our player, we have this collector script where we basically check for an iCollectible component. And if we find one, we tell it to collect itself. That's all I'm gonna cover there. Watch the video if you are confused. Okay, so let's start this tutorial. And so we actually wanna create three separate scripts. We wanna create an inventory script. We wanna create an inventory item script. And we wanna create an item data script. And without going into the scripts yet, the only thing I wanna do in the hierarchy here is right click, go to create empty. I'm going to call this new game object an inventory and we'll attach the inventory script and that's it. So you should have created three scripts and an inventory game object. Now let's go into our first script, which is going to be item data. So in this item data script, this is basically going to be as it's aptly called. It's just going to hold a couple data values for our items. And this is actually going to be a scriptable object not a mono behavior. So we can create these in the editor. At the top, we'll say create asset menu. And then the only things I'm gonna store here is a public string display name and a public sprite icon. So a display name and an icon. With that, we can then go into our assets folder and right click and go to create. And you'll now see item data at the top. So I can make something like blue gem data as a scriptable object asset. And in the display name, I could put blue gem and the icon, I'll put in my art asset for the blue gem. Feel free to add as many fields as you want for your items. But these are two really basic ones you should probably have. And the icon's useful for when you wanna display this in an inventory slot in the UI. We can use that icon. Okie dokie. So we made a scriptable object item data, and then we actually made one called blue gem data. But now let's actually go into our inventory item script. All right, so I emptied out our inventory item script and I can get rid of mono behavior because this is just going to be its own little class here. And we can add serializable to the top of our class. It'll complain until you add using system. Okay, so what do we want our inventory items to worry about? Right, think about an inventory item as a specific slot in a UI of an inventory. Well, we know we're gonna need some item data. So we can say public item data. And then this is optional, but we probably also wanna know how many of the same item we picked up or like how many are in the stack. If you don't want items to be stacked in your game, then just don't do this. But if you do, then we probably need an integer of how many of the current item we have in our inventory. We can say public int stack size. And then we wanna make a constructor. So we'll say public inventory item, we'll pass in a item data value, I'll call this item. And then in here, what we wanna do is set our item data variable to item. And then we wanna increment the stack. So I'll just create two methods right here, add to stack where we increment our stack size and remove from stack where we decrement from our stack size. Very simple, just utility methods. And then once we create an item and store it as an inventory item, well, we want to add to stack because our constructor is actually creating an inventory item. So every time we create one, well, we should increase the stack size. So we have our item data, which is just a name and an icon. And then we have an inventory item that basically says, hey, we have that item data and how many of them we have so far. So now let's actually have an inventory where we store inventory items. Okay, so I have our inventory script here. It's a mono behavior and it's attached to an inventory game object right now. It doesn't have to be a mono behavior, by the way. This could just be its own separate class and then you don't have to worry about attaching it to anything in game. I'm gonna use a mono behavior because I'm gonna assign some events to it on a enable. And so that just makes sense for me, but it, you really don't have to. So we need a list of inventory items. That's the basics, right? We have this inventory item class and this is what's actually going to be directly stored in our inventory, these inventory items. So we can say public list of type inventory item, 
and we'll call this our inventory. Now in your game, if you don't care about this stack size integer, you don't have to do this next part, but if you do, then we also wanna have a dictionary so that we can handle stacking our items. So I can say private dictionary of type item data as the key, and then the inventory item as the value. And I can call this item dictionary, right? And so what we're gonna be able to do is every time we try and add an item to our inventory, well, in order to make inventory items, we need to pass in an item data, which is going to be the key, right? So if we're passing in, say, that blue gem data, we'll say, hey, is it in the inventory yet? We'll check the dictionary. If there's no results, then we'll create it for the first time and we'll add this inventory item as a value to the dictionary. Otherwise, if we do blue gem data and we actually find it because it's like the fourth one we're picking up, we'll just tell it to increment the stack. We don't need to actually store like 10 blue gem inventory items. We just need to store one and then tell it to increase its stack size. Make sense? We could just initialize a new list of inventory item and a new dictionary of item data and inventory item. And then we just need to have an add and remove method, right? So we could say public void add, and we need to take in an item data. Now, like I just described, we wanna check to see if this item data is already in our dictionary, right? Does this already exist in the inventory? And so we could say if item dictionary dot try get value, and then we'll pass in, oops, forgot to make a variable. Sorry, so this would be item data or whatever you wanna name it. All right, so we'll try and get the value of item data. Does this exist in our dictionary? If it doesn't find anything, it's gonna return null, and we won't enter this if block. But if it does find something, then we wanna actually reference that inventory item value being stored on the dictionary. And so in C-sharp, we can say out inventory item, and I'll call this item, get rid of that parentheses, there you go. Right, so we try and get the value of item data, and if we find something, then let us use that inventory item right away. And in here, what we could say is item that we got from the dictionary dot add to stack. So we found one and we increased its stack size. Otherwise, if it doesn't exist yet in the inventory, then we wanna create a new inventory item. So we'll say inventory item, new item equals new inventory item. And we'll pass in our item data. We'll take our inventory list and tell it to add the new item as well, which again is all you really need to do if you don't care about stack size. But since I do care about stack size, I'll say item dictionary dot add. And then for the key, we'll say item data, right? And then for the inventory item, we'll say new item. I feel like I've already said item too many times. So once again, do we have this in our inventory? Yes, we do. Increase its stack size. No, we don't. We'll create a new inventory item and then store it in the list and the dictionary so that next time we pick up the same item, we can just increase its stack size. All right, and then we just need a way to remove these as well. So we can say public void remove. We wanna pass in an item data as well, call that item data. And then I'm just gonna copy paste this if block statement. It's the exact same as add. And in here what we can say is item dot remove from stack. So if you had four of these and you lost one, your stack would go down to three. But let's say we only had one of these in our inventory and then we removed it and now it's at zero. Then we need to remove it from our item list in our item dictionary. So we could say if the item dot stack size is equal to zero, then we know we need to remove it from our inventory. So we'll say inventory dot remove item. And then we need to remove it from the item dictionary. So we'll say item dictionary dot remove item data is the key. So a little lengthy to go through, but really not too bad, just a few lines of code. And now we're completely done with our inventory system. So now we have these gems out here in our scene, right? They have a circle collider 2D with is trigger set to true, and they have this gem script. So we have this gem script, right? This is from my last video. Let's update this so when we collide with this gem and we fire on gem collected, well then we wanna tell our inventory to add. But right now you'll see that the only types of methods that can respond to on gem collected is an action, which has a void return type and no arguments. If we look at add, we'll see we have a void return type here, but we need to pass in an item data argument. So in order to define that as the type of methods that can respond to this event, we need to create what's called a delegate. And so I'm actually just going to copy paste this method signature of add as a reference for you guys and I'll paste this here. And so we need to define a delegate 
that has a void return type and an item data argument. So I can say public delegate void return type. The name of our delegate doesn't really matter. It's just a way to reference this method signature. So I could say handle gem collected, and then it takes a item data argument, right? So void and void, that works. The name's irrelevant. And then item data matches what we have. Item data, we should be good. And then instead of action here, what we wanna do is take types of handle gem collected. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Delegates are kind of weird to wrap your mind around the first few times you see them, but they are very simple. The name's irrelevant. It's really just the return types and the arguments that are important. And so now you'll notice that it's actually complaining when we call on gem collected. It's saying there's no argument of item data being provided. So we actually need to provide something. What we want to do is make a reference to the scriptable objects. So we can say public item data, and then I'll call this gem data. And we could pass gem data into the event. On our gem prefab in the scene now, I can click and drag this blue gem data scriptable object we made before and put it in our gem data variable now. Okay, so this gem data is gonna hold our item data. In our inventory, on enable, we wanna say gem dot on gem collected plus equals add. And then on disable, we can just say gem dot on gem collected minus equals add. So we're safe and removing listeners when we don't need to be calling them. But we can ignore disable for now. So what's happening here is when we fire on gem collected, we're gonna pass in that gem data to add. It will try and see if that's in our dictionary. If it is, then we'll increase our stack in our inventory. If it's not, we'll create a gem item. So I can add a debug log statement here saying how many is in our total stack. And I can add another one here for when it's our first time being added to the inventory. I'll say it's the first time. So now I can walk into all of these different gems. We could check the console. And you'll see at the top, it says added blue gem to the inventory for the first time. Blue gems, what's on our scriptable object is a name. And then all the other times it's now the stack is two, three, four, five, six. And so that's it. That's all you need to set up your inventory system. It's a little bit of work, but this is a clean, flexible approach of doing it that uses scriptable objects, interfaces, and events. So it's definitely intermediate level. I'm sure if you're a beginner, you might have some questions. So comment down below. I'm happy to help walk you through any of this stuff. And obviously I'm not gonna cover the visual here like I mentioned at the beginning, that's for next time. But the main point is you now have this inventory items class and a list of them in your inventory. And in here, you're gonna be able to pull off like names, icons, and the stack size, which is probably the three most important things you need in any inventory display. So like the video if this helped you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.